Hi everybody, um, welcome to chapter seven. This is lesson one, and I think we're gonna be covering sections one and two of our notes today. Um, this, in, in addition to atomic structure, this deals with electromagnetic radiation. And what electromagnetic radiation is, it can be many different types, there are many different types, but in general, it's the way energy travels through space. So right now, for example, I have my space heater on and I'm feeling heat energy traveling through space to me um, to warm my toes because it's freezing out in those hallways. Heat energy is known as infrared radiation. The lights are on, light is traveling through space. That is the visible light spectrum. Microwaves are types of electromagnetic radi radiation. So all it is is the way energy travels through space. You do have to have an idea of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is it right here. So um, as you can see, the visible light that we see is only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. You have gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet light, like UVA and UVB that give you a sunburn when they come from the sun. You have infrared radiation, which is really heat, microwaves, radio waves, and of course this is not every form of radiation that there is. But this is the way that energy moves, and we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of this electromagnetic radiation in just a minute. I think what's important that you know is as you proceed from left to right, the wavelength increases of the radiation. Okay, and so we go from short wavelength to longer wavelength. And what they've done down here is they've pulled out the Roy G. Biv spectrum the, you know, the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet from the visible light spectrum. Blue over down here, and I know yours are not color coded, so blue radiation has the longest, uh, shortest wavelength, excuse me. Um, you don't know the symbol yet for wavelength. And again, as you go this way, the wavelength increases. So red radiation, red light, has the longest wavelength. Okay? And we'll be coming back to that in just a minute. Um, when we talk about electromagnetic radiation, even though all of these forms that you just saw here are very, very different, they all have three common characteristics. The first is that they exhibit wave-like behavior. And we'll talk about what it means to have wave-like behavior in just a minute. Number two, they travel at the speed of light when they're in a vacuum. So their velocity, which we call C, is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So red light in a vacuum travels at the same speed as white light, which travels at the same speed as a microwave in a vacuum. They all travel at the speed of light. And number three, they have a, what we call a frequency. And a frequency is a number of cycles of a wave per second. So let's talk about the characteristics. We said they exhibit wave-like behavior. Let's talk about what those characteristics are. Number one, they have a wavelength. A wavelength is the distance between two peaks in a wave. And I want to show you that real quick. Let me go back right here. I think it's this one. OK, so if I click on wavelength here, you can see that if we look at this red wave, it's like a sine wave that's going here, it is the distance between peak to peak. So it's the distance between here and here. That's one wavelength. Or you can measure it from trough to trough. Trough is the low part of a wave from here to here. That would be one wavelength, okay? And you can see that it's the same distance, whether you measure it from peak to peak or trough to trough. Um, what you should also recognize is that we, if we compare the wavelength of wave A to wave B here, Here's B's wavelength, right? You should see that the wavelength of A is greater than the little wavelength of B down here. So it's the distance, wavelength is the distance in a wave from peak to peak or trough to trough. Another characteristic of waves is, as we said, they have a frequency. And frequency is defined as the number of waves per second that pass through a point in space. We call it the cycles per second. Um, typically that's measured in per seconds. So we say, ooh, you can't see that. Hopefully you can see the blue, maybe the red. 
a note to self, don't use um, black background anymore. So it's seconds to the negative one, okay, or one over seconds. And one over seconds is the unit for a frequency. We also call that a hertz. Not like, ow, it hurts, but like hurts the rental car company. So it's H-E-R-T-Z, okay, is a cycle per second. <clears throat> the number of cycles per second. I didn't mention it, but wavelength is typically measured in meters when we calculate with it, but in reality you can't measure that distance in a meter. So typically we measure it in a nanometer. Um, so it's measured in nanometers, but it's calculated in meters. When we calculate, we use meters to calculate. So we'll have some converting between nanometers and meters in this section. And then obviously we said that all waves move in a vacuum at the speed of light. I rounded it when I gave it to you as three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So let me show you frequency back on that little thing. Mm, it's probably here. We'll reset it and we'll measure frequency. And as I said, frequency is the number of times uh, a wave passes a particular point in space. And frequency and wavelength are inversely related. Okay, so if you count the number of cycles that you have in this space, um, I don't know that it can be paused here. Hmm. Doesn't look like that. You should anyway see that at any given time there are more waves in the blue region for A or for B than there are for A. So we would say the frequency of B is greater than the frequency of A because there's more waves in this given point in time. Okay, and I'll show you another example of that in your notes. Here. So I think you have this picture in your notes also. And um, you can see there's three different waves. Um, move this down a little bit. So there's the red, the green, and the blue. And uh, if we look just at the wavelength, the wavelength of the red radiation is greater than the wavelength of the green, which is greater than the wavelength of the blue. But if this distance represents a second, and we count the wavelengths for A, then there's one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths. There's four wavelengths in one second, or four waves, I guess we could say, in one second. So we would say then that the frequency is four hertz. If you look at the green wave and you start counting, there's one, two, right? This is one, this is two, this is three, this would be four waves five waves, six waves, seven waves, eight waves. So the frequency here would be eight waves per second. So we'd say eight second to the seconds minus one, or we would say eight hertz, okay? And then down here, if you count them, just trust me, there's 16. So the longer wavelength, this one has the longest wavelength in distance, but it has the smallest frequency. It has and that makes sense. The longer the wave is, the less you'll have in that given amount of time. Whereas this wave has the shortest wavelength, but since they're all traveling at the same speed, it has the greatest frequency. there's an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. And we can, of course, quantitate that relationship here um, with the inverse relationship. There's an equation to represent that. And the equation that we use is wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. Okay. Where lambda, this symbol is lambda, lambda is the wavelength, and when we plug it into this equation, it'll be measured in meters. This is not a V, it's a nu, it's a Greek letter, N-U, it's a funky V. It looks more like the V that I drew up there rather than this V. And it's the frequency in cycles per second, or hertz. And C is the speed of light, 2.9979 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, okay? So we can perform calculations with this, of course, if we know 
since this is a constant, the speed of light is a constant, if you know the frequency, you can get the wavelength. If you know the wavelength, you can get the frequency, okay? Because C is a constant, it will always be this value. The brilliant red colors seen in fireworks are due to the emission of light with a wavelength of around 650 nanometers when strontium salts are burned. Calculate the frequency of red light at a wavelength of 6.50 times 10 to the second nanometers. Okay, so we're given wavelength. Six point five zero times ten to the second nanometers, and they're asking us for frequency. Okay, so we're going to use our equation that relates wavelength to frequency. Wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. The problem is, since the speed of light is measured in meters per second, our lambda must be in meters. So we have to convert this from nanometers to meters first. Okay? So we're just going to do a unit conversion, 650 nanometers. We want to get rid of the nanometers. We want to convert to meters. Two letter symbol always gets the one. One nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth meters. So if you multiply this, you should get 6.50 times 10 to the negative seventh meters is your wavelength, okay? Now we just plug into the equation. C equals lambda times V, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals 6.50 times 10 to the negative 7 meters times your frequency. And so we'll divide both sides by 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7 to get our answer. Which should give us 4.6 times 10 to the 14th. And that's a positive 14, even though I was going to make a negative 14. And uh, if you think about the unit, you're dividing by meters. So meters cancel out, and you're left with per seconds, right? Seconds is in the denominator. So seconds to the negative 1 is your unit with that. Or hertz. You could say 4.6 times 10 to the 14th hertz is your final answer to that. Okay, sample problem number two I'd actually like you to do on your own. It's using the electromagnetic radiation table. So why don't you take a minute uh, and do sample problem number two on your own for tomorrow. Um, that's it for tonight. I'll do the, the remaining video. is going to be another long one, section two, so we'll save that for tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.